Hey guys, just so you know, this video I'm about to show, uh, filmed a couple of weeks ago, the uh, topic of 9-11 is always emotional for me, and I just haven't been able to uh, bring myself to um, edit it and put it up, and I'm doing it now, so just so you know, my references to a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago uh, is a little stale at this point. Um, anyway, let's get to it, and please like and subscribe, thank you so much. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If I'm lucky enough to have any repeat viewers, please remember to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell. Really helps me out. Um, I'd done a video the other day um, reacting to Tom Brokaw explaining uh, Canada to America, and it went into a segment of um, about 9-11 and Canada's response to 9-11 and taking care of our citizens when our airspace was closed down. And, um, you know, I had a pretty strong reaction to it. The, the subject of 9-11 always is triggering for me. Um, being a New Yorker, being here, uh, when it all went down, I just to this day, it's, it's kind of a hard topic. But so many of you were so thoughtful in your comments to me. And I, I, I really appreciate that. And so many recommended that I get take a deeper dive into and look at the documentary uh, about uh, Gander's uh, ripple effect and um, how that incident ultimately led to um, a Broadway show. And so I'm looking at this documentary by the CBC, Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, I'm going out on a limb here because this is 44 minutes long and nobody wants to look at this mug for 44 minutes, but I'll probably split this up into two or three parts and I hope that uh, anyone who watches part number one will come back for the rest of it. It seems like this is a worthwhile topic and I'm gonna get into it now, so thank you. If you've never been to New York City, what they were showing you was the 9-11 Memorial where the Twin Towers used to stand and, and that, that well is the footprint of where the building was. The names of the victims all around it. Well, just as a quick aside too, um, somebody reminded me in the comments the other day that Canadian firefighters actually came down to New, to New York to um, help the recovery, what really was by that, that point a recovery effort down at the, at the pile and got, and, and many of them have contracted the lung diseases and cancers that um, have resulted to those heroes for uh, breathing in that toxic air. So um, thank you, Canada, for, for doing that for us. On a clear blue September morning, steel straight lines broke and crumbled, changing the world. Apparently, a small passenger plane has crashed into one of the World Trade Towers. I frankly don't watch this anymore. I used to on all of the Remembrance Days for years. Uh, it's been actually several years since I've seen this footage. As we turned and banked over Long Island, I was looking out the window and that's when the second plane hit. Um, so there was a puff of smoke on the horizon. Minutes after the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, U.S. airspace shut down. Hundreds of planes in the air above the Atlantic Ocean were ordered to backtrack to Europe or land at Canadian airports. 38 jets turned towards what? Backtrack to Europe, I wonder if they, they must have had fuel issues. It used to be the world's largest runway. Those jets held 7,000 passengers. Gander's population was about to double. With a mm. proud military tradition and a history of stepping up, 
Gander was more ready than most towns would be. Our plane was scheduled to land at JFK at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's where we were diverted from. So as we were approaching JFK over Long Island, the first plane hit the World Trade Center towers, and between the first and second planes is when our captain was given the, the information to turn and head north to Gander. So as we approached so Gander, been terrifying. I remember looking out the window and seeing uh, seven other airplanes already parked on the runway. And we, like an evil Knievel daredevil rider, we skimmed over the top of those airplanes and landed on the other side of them. Welcome to unexpected uh, visit to Canada. We are in Gan Gander, just informed of a horrible tragedy in Washington and in New York City. And uh, thank God we're not a part of it. Safe here, but um, anyway, every single plane over the ocean is being diverted here. I think so. We're not sure where we're going to go or how long we're going to be here. We had received a report through our communication lines that uh, what would appear to be a, maybe a terrorist activity or hijacking has occurred on the ground for eight hours, and it must have been um, really confusing for them because they weren't able to just sit in front of a TV and watch events unfold and probably weren't able to get current information. On the plane for about 8, 15 hours? I don't know. I don't even know. Anyway, we're getting ready to get off soon. I learned when we got off the airplane, these yellow school buses that were there to sh shuttle us around, the driver told us they were actually on strike and um, they had come off the strike um, in order to help people. And I'll never forget, clear as day, we got off the plane, it was this beautiful blue sky, completely warm. The first thing that happened was somebody came to me with like a little box of food and a toothbrush. And there was a complete stranger who just walked up to me and said, here. While the bomb squad was examining the planes full of passengers, Little kindnesses and comforts like that can really make a huge difference when there's traumatic events going on. People of Gander and surrounding towns got busy, setting up cots, gathering bedding, and cooking for thousands. Everybody had to be processed by the Red Cross, and, and this is where they had tables set up with all the food and everything for all the passengers when we got off the plane. And that's what was so amazing to us is, you know, we've been on the airplane all night, we get off. And I was just shocked at the amount of food they had cooked overnight. They obviously did not sleep one minute. My children were eight and nine, and um, it, actually it was a very hard day for my husband because it, there was such an unknown for him. All they knew is that I was flying, you know, the, my husband and my kids, um, but they didn't know where I was. And they spent the whole day not knowing where I was because even though they tried to call American, I'm, you weren't going to be able to get through and uh, American had a huge domestic operation to deal with not to mention the fact that we and we just didn't know we just didn't know whether there were other planes you know we heard about the Pentagon and then we heard about the plane that crashed in in Pennsylvania it's just a lot of speculation as to even whether our fighter jets were shooting them down and lost two airplanes. I knew where Sorry. I was. I knew I was okay. I knew I was on the ground in Gander, but my family did not know. So so it was much more challenging for them. And in the beginning of the musical, when Jen picks up the phone and says, I'm fine, Tom, it's still very hard for him. No, I'm fine, Tom. I'm I, I can relate to that a little bit and you know I didn't hear from my wife right away and you know I obviously finally did I was thrilled and then the question was how does she get out of Manhattan for the 7,000 passengers who were finally out of their planes and on the ground relief was soon mixed with shock How many are you making breakfast for? Uh, approximately 300. So, yes, that's right. So uh, hopefully we'll get them all fed within a reasonable time. How long have you been here helping us? Oh, 
uh, we came here yesterday morning and we worked till uh, 9, 10 o'clock last night. We came back again 7 o'clock this morning. So and we're here cooking breakfast now for people. So we're trying to do it best we can. What the effort of people can or put into it? I think it's fantastic. The amount of food we have here is unreal. I mean, people have been supporting from all over, from Lewisport, Botwood, various places around, uh, around the loop. And that food is just coming in. It's amazing response to, that we're getting. The sun rising, uh, we're in uh, Gander, Newfoundland, and uh, this is our home for last night at the College of the North Atlantic uh, in Gander, and they've been wonderful people here. Uh, I, I'm just thinking, I'm processing all of this, so I'm uh, a few minutes ago, the, the gentleman who was cooking um, had a particular accent that I was not familiar with. Is that a Newfoundland accent? There's dust and tons of volunteers and just amazing. I think it's absolutely wonderful. People of Ghana have been absolutely marvelous <laughs> for what they've done here for the silver medal. People so, so generous. <laughs> I can't thank them enough. It's the same, everybody feels the same down here as well. Everybody off the plane have been they're so grateful. They are absolutely great, you are, really lovely people. It's beautiful. I just thought we could do the same if it, uh, if it ever happened in our country. I'm so, so proud. You ought to be so, so proud of everybody here. We're so thankful. It's been brilliant. Everyone seems to have pulled together, you know. Uh, it's amazing where all the, the, the stuff has come from. Uh, because it doesn't seem really a large town, but everybody, I mean, everybody in the whole town is pulled together. And it, we chucked the bits, we really are proud. We will always have. Where did it all come from? Was it just all local, you know, people bringing food from their homes, um, local grocery stores, supermarkets, or was there some kind of larger effort to uh, transport food into the community? Gander in our hearts, anyway. I have to say. A great, great thank you to everybody in uh, this village, to the staff, to the teachers, to the youth, to the families, and uh, they are so helpful. They are full of friendship to us, and they support us, and they smile, and uh, they cook by themselves, and it's, it's great. And uh, that's more than any master plan can um, uh, could have developed. It's just from yeah. man to man, and this is great. And, Thank you to everybody. Central Newfoundlanders invited the plane. And, and I'm, you know, I, I guess I knew this, but I'm just starting to appreciate the fact that uh, there were people really from all over the world traveling to New York or to the United States that day, and not just Americans. Um, and so Canada came to, came together to support this little international community that ended up landing in this small community. Into their homes phone calls, or to take showers, and to stay for dinner. Rock-solid friendships were soon formed. A thousand miles away from home, we should be climbing sane. But our plates are never empty. Lord, they're feeding us again. A thousand miles <laughs> away from home, we're waiting for a plane. I'm sure I can say this for everybody. I, you know, with something, the, the stuff that's on television there uh, being the worst of what we're capable of and then coming here and seeing the best of what we're capable of in this place is just so amazing. After a week with a hurricane headed for the island and a... It's unfortunate that sometimes it takes tragedy to... Um, see and appreciate the best in us as a, as a species um, and as a culture new yorkers stepped up that day um, i'm sorry i'm just a little uh at a loss for words on this um which isn't good when you're doing a reaction channel <laughs> but um I just, I'm, I'm just loving this and loving to see how these uh, wonderful Canadians and Newfoundlanders responded here. Just the kindness, it's, it's amazing.
concern that some of the jumbo jets were sinking into the tarmac, airlines were finally given clearance to fly. It's been quite an adventure. I have never, ever met anybody as nice as the people in Gander. It is unbelievable. I'm serious. Never have I met people as wonderful, as helpful. Makes me, There's not <laughs> one person that we've come Makes me want to go there immediately and just hug them all. It's overwhelming. We've had very, very good people taking care of us. They've been wonderful. They treated us just like we were home. It's been wonderful. It's, it's been wonderful. It brought tears to our eyes to leave. Um, but they've been great. They've been really great to us. And this is something that you will never forget. You always remember, you know, the people here. Uh, they were wonderful, just wonderful, outstanding. 7,000 plane people, now considered friends, went home and the Central Newfoundlanders got some rest. The ripple effect was just getting started. Well, that was, uh, I, I think this is a good place to start to stop here. The, I'm a little over 10 minutes in, it just seemed like it was now segueing into the ripple effect and, and what the ripple effect is going to be. But the central story of what happened in Gander was, was coming to a close. So I think this is a good place to stop for now, and I'll do part two um, very shortly if you want me to. And um, your response to this video, I guess, will dictate that. Um, I'm certainly going to watch it regardless. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for part two. I can't wait to get to it. Thank you.